Let's bring Representative Pike forward, and we'll have a staff report on uh, House Bill 1951. Thank you, Mr. Chair. House Bill 1951 concerns the authority of law enforcement agencies' authority to use unmarked vehicles. All publicly owned vehicles used in the public business on the public highways must be marked with the name of the public body and the name of the department which is using the vehicle. The markings must be in contrasting color, uh, be a certain size, and be in a conspicuous place on the left and right sides of the vehicle. However, there are several vehicles uh, to which this marking requirement does not apply. For example, Vehicles operated by the Sheriff's Office, local police department, or vehicles used by local peace officers under public authority for special undercover or confidential investigative purposes do not need to comply with the requirement, as well as municipal transit vehicles, a motorcycle, vehicles over 10,000 pounds, or other vehicles that for structural reasons cannot be so marked. Um, vehicles, motor vehicles on loan to a school district for driver training purposes are also exempt. Passenger motor vehicles owned or controlled by the Washington State Patrol must be plainly, by the state of Washington must be plainly and conspicuously marked according to certain requirements. However, this marking requirement does not apply to vehicles used by the Washington State Patrol for general, undercover, or confidential investigative purposes. Traffic control vehicles of the Washington State Patrol may also be exempt at the discretion of the chief of the Washington State Patrol. The markings where required must be maintained in legible <coughs> condition. House Bill 1951 clarifies that vehicle marking requirements for publicly owned vehicles used in the public business on the public highways do not apply to vehicles used by local peace officers under public authority for special undercover or confidential investigative purposes. Thank you. Thanks, Cassie. So I think that the issue here is that uh, law enforcement wants clarity in the statute that unmarked vehicles in these circumstances are uh, that there's unlimited ability to use unmarked vehicles rather than limited. I think there's two different readings of the statute and we may need to rework the bill to make it clear because we were trying to figure it out itself. So uh, maybe Representative Pike, you can explain it all to us. So tell us what's going on in Camas. Good morning, Chair Goodman, and thank you for giving this bill consideration this morning and good morning members of the Public Safety Committee on this beautiful, glorious Tuesday morning when the sun is shining in Olympia. Uh, the this bill began in my Camas police chief's office. Uh, he invited me to visit with him about this RCW. And there has been two competing interpretations of the current RCW surrounding unmarked vehicles. Oh, can I interrupt you? You yes. need to introduce yourself for oh. the record. So who are you? I am Liz Pike, hailing from the mighty 18th district in southwest Washington, representing six cities uh, in, that, in that region. Um, so. This current statute on unmarked vehicles for our public safety agencies is, there are two competing interpretations that seem to be at odds. Um, there are some attorney general's opinions and other uh, city attorney's opinions which conflict. And um, rightly so, my chief of police in Camas, uh, along with the other agencies that I consulted with in the 18th district, all agree that it's about as clear as mud right now. So what we're looking for is clarity. And I started working with Mr. Gower on a draft, and we went through probably no less than 12 different versions we can of this blame bill. Blame it on John. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and um, because of, I, mean, I was trying to thread the needle and please all competing interests, and then finally, as all of you that are more experienced than I am in the legislature know that you can't please everybody all the time, so we settled on this version, which does give, um, it, it, it gives a little bit of um, discretion to our local law enforcement chiefs, so chief of police and sheriff office, uh, elected sheriffs. And I want to start out, too, by saying that um, the intent of this bill is not to give, um, it, it's not to allow our police forces to use unmarked vehicles for traffic enforcement, because I know that's a, a kind of a hot topic for some people. And personally, I love seeing police cars in my community. I love seeing police cars in neighborhoods. I think it makes everybody feel safer. Um, but the truth is, most police chiefs across the state, probably in your district as well, are using an unmarked vehicle for their own use, 
in, on official business, and many of their command staff are using unmarked vehicles. So it's already occurring, so this isn't going to be something that's brand new. Um, and this is an effort to give some of that discretion to our police chiefs and our sheriffs that are elected. And I don't know about you, but I trust the people in my community that are appointed police chiefs, and I also trust my county elected sheriff, so I don't have a problem giving them discretion on unmarked vehicles. Um, so that's what it all boils down to is, um, right now the statute is very murky, and there have been competing interpretations of the current statute, so it is the intent of this bill to clarify that discretion currently really being given to our our lead agency officials. And again, Chair Goodman, I really appreciate you hearing this bill at this point in the session, and um, I am certainly open to um, additional language um, if it will help move this bill forward so that we can provide that clarity to our law enforcement officials. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Yeah, we're looking for clarity. We might have to clarify the clarification, so uh, we can look for a clarifying amendment on that. So. And I will be happy but, to answer uh, any questions. Forward. We're going to hear from the, your chief now. Let's okay. let's hear from the chief of Camas. Uh, um, let's see, Mitch Lackey, and then James McMahon, if you could also join him. Also signing in is my city of Kirkland. In favor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as represented, oh, I'm Mitch Lackey. I'm chief of police from the city of Camas. That's a nice badge you got there. That's Thank a, you. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, that's an unusual looking yes. badge. Um, as Representative Pike said, uh, she brought this bill forward at my urging. And uh, what I would like to ask this committee's help for is to help create respect for law enforcement. I met a very nice gentleman in the back of the room, and he's going to testify today to kind of the other side of this equation. Uh, the people that believe that RCW 4608065 has a limited uh, use of law enforcement undercover vehicles. Well, what I will tell you is when you can look at my gray hair, I've been involved in law enforcement for about 30 years. And at the time I became, I wasn't around in 1975 when the law was recrafted, but at the time I became in, uh, involved in law enforcement, these unmarked vehicles were already being used by command staff people, specialty units, and even in some patrol uh, uses around the state. So uh, I was one of those people who kind of uh, looked at that statute for many, many years, and every time that this issue would come up from somebody in the public about, hey, there's only a limited use of those vehicles, I would look at it, we would check with our legal advisor, and they would assure us, no, that this doesn't apply to you. But yet, um, there's still this strong feeling by many in the public where they look at this statute another way, and they say, no, the statute has a limited uh, use of undercover vehicles. And so for 40 years, that debate has gone back and forth. And last year, when uh, in Grant County, we had a citizen that actually kind of stopped a police officer um, for what the citizen believed was a violation of law while the officer was on duty, I kind of thought, well, that's gone too far. We, we kind of need to fix this. That really creates kind of an unsafe situation where you have the public wanting to enforce a law on the police. So. Um, I think, as you read this statute, like Representative Pike said, it's as, as clear as mud. Uh, in one way or another, you have people looking at this and they're saying, again, I read it one way, other people look at the exact same words, they look at the commas, they look at the word or, how it's put in the statute, and they say, no, I read it a different way. Now, in law enforcement, our stock and trade is what? It's our credibility. We're the guys out there trying to enforce the rules. And you know what I told Representative Pike? Hey. We're rule, f rule followers, not rule breakers. So we need to know what this statute means. So what? What? Do, I mean, so the prospect of unlimited use of unmarked vehicles might raise concerns. That's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about unlimited use in the context of what the statute allows. Is, isn't that right? Maybe what, we could have. What I would encourage the committee to consider is we're not. I'm not here today to ask in a, of a change in practice. The practice that exists today has been the practice that has always existed in law enforcement. And so what by recrafting the wording, by placing just a period in the right spot in this sentence, what it does is it makes it clear that the practice that exists today in law enforcement is the legal practice. So you end the debate. Um, 
And frankly, although I disagree with kind of the other reading, we would be better off one way or another to have this issue just addressed. So uh, Representative Pike's bill, which this bill has no fiscal impact, it's just a change of the, of the way that the uh, statute is crafted, brings clarity, resolves the issue once and for all for both camps to say, this is what that statute means. And again, it just legalizes and makes it clear that the practice that has existed in law enforcement for as long as I've been around is a legal practice. So, but what is this practice? I guess talk a little bit more about when, you know, yes. what, so, I, I, there's, I, I, I see um, gesticulation going on in the back of the room. He's, uh, he's about to testify. So, sure. yeah. so in law enforcement, we use uh, a combination of both marked and unmarked vehicles. As an example, the vehicle I drove up here to Olympia today is an unmarked Chevy uh, Caprice, uh, Chevy Impala. So um, we have our command staff has unmarked vehicles. There are certain unmarked vehicles used in our patrol staff. We have unmarked vehicles used in our specialty units like detectives. Um, in our county, we have uh, traffic uh, officers who work for the traffic homicide unit for the sheriff. They drive unmarked Chevy Tahoes. Um, there are all sorts of unmarked police vehicles used all around the state, every corner of the state. When I attend the WASPIC conventions twice a year and all the sheriffs and chiefs get together at the hotel, uh, literally there's, you know, a hundred unmarked police vehicles in the parking lot, all driven there by command staff people, sheriffs or chiefs. So uh, are all those vehicles being used uh, illegally against the statute or are all those uh, sheriffs and chiefs driving vehicles that are consistent with the statute? And it, the answer really comes down to how do you read the statute? Well, I'm, I think uh, the public might be more in interested in what actually happens on the street rather than what the statute says. And so I'm just trying to address, let me ask James to talk on behalf of the Sheriff's Police Chiefs in general. What does the statute provide or is it possible for every police vehicle in the state to be unmarked? Um, good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. I'm James McMahon, Policy Director with the Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs here today to support this bill. Um, if I can, let me run through my testimony. I may be able to provide some clarity, and then it, if I haven't answered your question, please ask it again. Um, the, the meaning of this bill, or the, the central issue around this bill, is what does the word or mean in this context? Um, if, for those of you who have, um, there was an inside joke there. Um, for those of you who have the, the existing statute in front of you, I'd like you to look at it. It's one sentence that we're really talking about. It says, this section shall not apply to vehicles of a sheriff's office, local police department, or any vehicles used by local police officers under public authority for special undercover or confidential investigative purposes. The bill puts a period in the middle of that and breaks one sentence into two. So let me take this sentence structure and apply it to something that I'm incredibly familiar with, the grocery list from my wife. So let's say my wife says, James, I'd like you to go to the grocery store and you can get milk, you can get sour cream, or something orange. Now, I know that there are three things that she's given me the option to do. She didn't tell me I can get orange milk or orange sour cream. Those are the two interpretations. I, I lost you on that. Those are the two interpretations of this statute. We think the word or means or. There are three separate exemptions in this one sentence. This sentence exempts vehicles of a sheriff's office, period. We think it exempts vehicles of a police department, period. We think it also exempts other vehicles that peace officers use for confidential or special investigative or confidential other undercover purposes. Let me give you a movie example. So that's not traffic. Correct. That's yeah. not traffic. Let me give you a movie example of, of what I think that last exemption is applying to. If we use a, a utility truck from the public works department to act like we're fixing a telephone pole to watch the, you know, the, somebody that we're investigating, that's that kind of example. If we have somebody who's undercover using a non-police vehicle, a, a, a civilian vehicle, for their undercover purposes, that's the kind of example. We think there are cl three very clear and distinct exemptions here. And, and the problem that we have isn't just a, an academic debate back and forth among police executives and members of the public. We have people, and the chief talked about it, we have people who are attempting to initiate citizen traffic stops on law enforcement officers while on duty. Um, the, the first couple came by waving, waving a, a, a sheriff's deputy in Grant County down, um, and then the person walked up to the vehicle of, the, of the, the sheriff's deputy's vehicle and said, the reason why I pulled you over today is. 
Now, that sheriff's deputy demonstrated incredible restraint. Um, we also had them, uh, a Chelan County sheriff's deputy was driving to Leavenworth um, and had a vehicle behind him flashing their, their headlights in an attempt to pull over a sheriff's deputy to attempt to enforce this law and do a traffic stop. We've heard about it in Pierce County. Um, I, I just saw a deal that um, somebody tried to do this with uh, a state patrol trooper who was in the middle of a traffic stop um, while on duty. These can be very dangerous things. It's a terrible idea to attempt to do this. Um, this is more than an academic exercise. We hope that you provide this clarity in law so there's no confusion, no ambiguity, and frankly, no chance of people attempting to provide a, a traffic stop. Now, Mr. Chair, to your question about uh, whether this is unlimited authority or not, we think existing law, there already is unlimited authority. Chief Lackey could say, make a decision for his department that every one of our police vehicles are going to be unmarked. Um, I, I think he would probably say that, public that'd be a, confidence a, little that'd bit be a bad decision. Exactly. Which is why we haven't seen that. I, I know there's kind of an auxiliary worry about, well, what if you made everyone and we got to put some limits on? There are no limits now, and we've not had a problem. If that becomes a problem, I think we're certainly willing It'll to address it. But that's, us, not, yeah. that's not the issue in this bill. This okay. is an issue about safety. As long as you're not attempting to, determine, uh, to define what the word is, is. But, right. Yeah. So we're talking yes. about or. It's here. or. Yeah. Totally different thing. So, and remember, there was the comma bill quite a number of years ago where we added a comma on the felony murder case. I don't know if you remember that, but uh, one comma made a huge difference yeah. for uh, yeah. So thank you very much for the presentation. We're going to hear from Kevin Schmedica now, thank his you. concerns about this. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Kevin Schmedica. I reside in Pierce County, and I'm opposed to this bill. Uh, the effect of this bill will be to um, essentially require that uh, citizens stop for any vehicle whatsoever that displays flashing lights. Now, they've talked about ambiguity in the law. I'm here to tell you that there is no such ambiguity. A uh, proper reading of the relevant sentence would go as follows. This section shall not apply to vehicles of a sheriff's office, local police department, or any vehicles used by local peace officers under public authority for special undercover or confidential investigative purposes. Four is the operative word. The special undercover or confidential investigative requirement applies to all the vehicles in that sentence. Now, um, oh, we don't allow here, props. Like sorry, I'm sorry, we don't allow props. That's, that's actually that? part of the House rules, yeah. Don't allow what? Props. You can't be showing stuff at the uh, committee hearings. Okay. Sorry about that. Well, what I wanted to show you was a pair of fake police lights. They cost about $30 online, you hang them on your visor, and they're extremely realistic looking. Um, if I had the chance to show them to you, um, you'd be deeply concerned, because if you saw them in your rearview mirror, you would stop. Now, recently, I emailed e each of you copies of my court brief, uh, legal brief that I've researched extensively, which um, cont also contained um, a list of impersonator incidents that have happened in this, in this state. Um, okay. Representative Pettigrew has a question. Not of him, just of staff. Oh yeah. Are is are there laws that uh, um, against someone um, impersonating a police impersonating officer. a police officer? For sure. Um, yes, impersonating a police officer obviously is is illegal. Okay. That's it is. There are laws that, that cover that area. But what about this Uniform idea and of vehicle putting, and all the, and everything? Impersonate. Yeah, we have a law enforcement officer here. Actually, we have a couple. Representative Clipper. So I'm just going to. I'm requesting a point of personal privilege, and I think I got that now. So my my suggestion would be in these cases, because I understand exactly what you're saying, is and my suggestion would be for anyone who's watching this, maybe we can put as a, a point of uh, public information that if someone feels that they're being pulled over by someone other than law enforcement, if they have a cell phone available to call 911 and say, I'm at this location, someone's behind me with a blue light flashing, am I truly being pulled over by law enforcement or not? And then if they're not, then we can respond and take, make accountable that person that you're speaking of that has that fake, there, fake there, light. There are a lot of problems with that approach. You might not have a phone, you might not have service, you Understood. might not get through to the right department. They might not handle, handle your call properly a in a timely manner. 
Thank and you, if Mr. you don't stop immediately, some law enforcement officers will consider that your refusal to stop to be threatening behavior. They might run you off the road. Mm -hmm. Representative Moscoso. They might, or after you eventually do stop, there have been people who have been dragged out of their cars with guns to their heads, literally. Representative Moscoso has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I appreciate what you're saying, and it is a problem. I'm not sure how that ties to the, to the bill we're looking at here. Could you the, the current bill will uh, serve to facilitate impersonators. That's what I don't get. Oh, so like uh, operating if, under, if, under yes. uh, pretending no, to operate un undercover. Un currently, they're, they're doing a lot of traffic stops in unmarked cars, and every single time they do it, they're breaking the law. Now, um, you can haggle over what the meaning of or means in this relevant sentence, but what you can't haggle over is the legislative bill documents from the uh, bills that uh, created the current version of RCW 46.08.065. Uh, one such quote from those documents reads, a vehicle marking exemption for vehicles used by sheriffs, local police, and local peace officers is continued, but is limited to vehicles used for undercover or confidential investigative purposes. All those documents are in the brief that I emailed to each of you. Okay. So we have run out of time. Thank you very much, Kevin, for bringing this forward. Uh, we'll look at that as part of our consideration of this bill. Thank you. Um, so that will conclude the hearing on House Bill 1951, uh, and we'll uh, conclude our uh, session for today. The House Public Safety Committee is hereby adjourned. Have a good day, everyone.